Hey folks, and welcome to Let's Talk. This is my show where I sit down with subject matter experts and or people well-versed in a certain topic in tabletop and we editorialize, give our opinions, and generally discuss the comings, goings, and current hot news. Now this isn't necessarily as G-rated as the rest of GMG, so uh, viewer and listener discretion is advised. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. This is uh, my weekly show where we sit down and talk about what's new, what's going on, and what's happening in Wargaming, editorialize, and just basically hang out and chat. So this is available um, online on YouTube or as a podcast. You can click the RSS uh, or like just direct link to SoundCloud below if you want to check it out. And for those of you watching, you get to you get to see our reactions and talking and stuff. I'm here with Owen from Game with the Cooler. Howdy. And we Back are just... Again. Yes, we had just spent the um, the last two days basically getting ready to play and playing Warhammer Age of Sigmar Warcry. So it's on our brains, um, and we're going to have a episode today where we discuss that. And this is going to use a new format. Um, I wanted to come up with a format for discussing games or products in general because we've just kind of freeformed it before. Right. And I think having talking points is going to help us here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to give a star grade uh, when this is all said and done in three categories. The first one's product design. Uh, and a whole bunch of stuff goes into that from the components, like the actual component materials, like the dice, the um, cards, the mat, the box, all that stuff. Uh, and then the models, the actual like model kits that come in there. And then game design, the second category, uh, the core engine of how the game plays, factions, uh, and how they feel, what the faction rules are. And then campaigns and scenarios, so like the what you play when you're playing the game. So basically... It's the core engine of how it runs, then what you and your opponent are going to pick from to do the thing, and then the things you do. So those are the three things for game design. And then finally, playability. Uh, and playability is two components. First thing is the Christmas morning task, what I call the Christmas morning task. It's time invested to play. So how, how, does it, how much work is involved in getting ready to play and playing uh, versus replayability. So how much time are you going to spend playing it? Uh, and that equation, I think, is an interesting one because... Some games you don't spend a lot of time getting ready to play, <laughs> but you might play them for a long time. And, and that's a good, I think, thing to try and balance out. So uh, I'm going to kick it off with proc design, and I'm going to let Owen take it away and talk about the component stuff first. So how did you feel about these components, the, the physical stuff, like the I cards mean, and stuff? Yeah, everything. It's, it is Games Workshop, so like there's a bunch of check marks that you're going to get right off the get-go for anyone who's got any of their things. Like... The token quality is pretty good. They're not just paper tokens. They've there's something there's something there, but you're definitely gonna get that peel back that you get off of them. Like even now with that sticky tack, we're probably not gonna get it off of all of these. No. Um, the cards themselves are like fine. They have a nice finish. Like, yeah. They have like a nice like. Um... I like that it's a flat mat. On the board, it's yeah. not glossy because those are always like we've had to do that before. Man, we'd, we'd, we'd have to testers dull coat the, uh, the yeah. mats and stuff so we can actually film on them because that's it a filming thing. Like light. normal games, yeah, it's not so much, but, but I it mean, still breaks the immersion. You if you're supposed to be glossy. gritty guys walking around on like pavement, the pavement shouldn't shine. Yeah. Um, I mean, models are good. I I don't like the case that as, as let's we'll skip the, into models afterwards. Right. Let's keep keep talking about the components. Anything else? Because those are the pieces. I mean, rulebook's fine too. Box is nice and hard. Oh, actually, the rulebook has already started to come unbound. Oh, really? The, cover, the cover's already coming off. Now, I did push it flat during the review, but you would have to push it flat to photocopy the back things anyway to get your roster sheets out of it. Right. So yeah, even yeah. though I did that on camera, that was going to happen with the back cover anyway, just to make those photocopies. And it's already come unglued on the one side. So, I mean, it could just be me being rough and ham handing it, but the glue on the spine it is a soft cover. So, there's no D10. That's funny. That's so. That was the one I was gonna bring up. Yeah. I love the dice. The one problem I had so far was just the the component amount in there. Was you each get three? Um, if you're playing two player, you get six or three of the black dice, right. which are the ones you guys are supposed to roll and do for your attacks. So you're either sharing six of them or you each get three. And you're definitely sharing because uh, like literally half of the characters in this game has four dice. That's it. Or you start using your initiative dice, which you're supposed to put to one side. Right. Which. If you roll a bunch of singles, it's not a problem because you have things you're not spending on the board anyway. Quad and a double. But if you go a quad and a double, all of a sudden you've got not enough dice to do your rolling. Yep. And um, then one of the starting factions involves adding like a series of dice to your attacks. <laughs> that's right, a huge pile of dice all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would have just given six extra dice. If each player had six dice of the black dice, like 12 black dice and then six of the colored dice. Yeah, 24 dice total. It was just one of those so things where for a small increase in what you got, there's certain mechanics in the game where you felt like you were handing stuff back and forth. And what is that, a dollar? It's it's a pretty minor, <laughs> it's a pretty minor thing, but it is for me, for me, it's just one of those things that it pops in my head when I'm playing the game. Um, and the second thing is like you mentioned the D10. So in they copied almost like like verbatim the name generator from Kill Team. Yeah. And in Kill Team you got a D10. In this one it was a D10, but you there didn't get a D10. D10. 
<laughs> and that way one... you can lean on your collection of D10s, which everyone has, especially people who play Games Workshop yeah. games. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> but but the the irony, I guess, was it, it just felt like a component where they did it. They put a thing in the book, and then when they, they actually were, were putting the components together for the box, they just didn't think about it. Um, the last bit would be the because we don't actually. This is one that I, I can't. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me yet. The the symbology-driven cards, so the cards yes. being only symbols as opposed to any language, means that all of, just from a game design mechanic, all of the stuff that you're doing game design-wise needs to be on the ability tables for the Actually, factions. That is side. something that I think about now. I'd rather that this was artwork than a model. Why is that? Well, you buy a box of models. They are now this. That's true. Yeah, you because, can't convert them. Yeah, and and this doesn't. This isn't a representation of a planes runner. This is what a planes runner. This is what is. a planes runner looks like. Well, there's three this different ones though. Guy, but yeah, but there's three different there's, ones, isn't there? There's only one card that looks like that one guy. But I like, guess that's fine. True, yeah. Whatever. Pick a character. Like, well, the back of your ability card does show everybody who has that name. But then again, the but names that's not the aren't point on I'm the. To make, yeah. yeah, I know. I get it. But the names aren't even on the card, so like you wouldn't yeah. necessarily be able to associate them. You'd have to look at the pictures. So you have to go by the pictures on this. And. So the but, assumption of the logic is that you've done this thing to try and make it so that you can put that into any box. They're going to be packed in the box and not have to have a language on there, right? So you use, you use inf infographics as opposed to using words. Literally just poses and equipment is going to start messing with this. Yes. Like I have two cards for my, um, for my prey takers because there's prey taker with axe and prey taker with blade. And they had to make two different cards. I know they have different stats, but like... There's three different versions of a guy with an axe, but they had to show three pictures of the guys with axes because the card has a picture of one of those three guys with an axe rather than all three. But yeah. if you did artwork of a guy with an axe and this was just an artwork of like a group of them standing together or like in the book or whatever, then you don't worry so much about it anymore. But this is the model. And That's this is model this is. is the push-pull prog design because in one case, especially with the, the, the Untamed Beasts, you have an example where the same guy on the on the fighter types on the back is represented by two different cards but then the inverse is true where three different guys which is your planes but runners are represented by one card and there's yeah. not really an explanation of that i mean these guys have two different stats which is relevant they, they do for sure but yeah. they have the same name so it's like it, the assumption is if you have two guys who look different that require different cards why don't the other three guys who look different require different cards, right? Yeah. Oh, well, their stats are the same. And, okay, well... But, you, but nothing explains that to you, right? So so using infographics, there's some, there's some, there can be some built-in confusion to it. The reason would be by not having words and stuff on those cards, they have to print only those cards once. And I'm assuming that if they're going to be packaging this stuff with cards inside, the abilities card is going to come in there in every language that's on that packaging. So they may they may have the big card, the ability card, in every single box that you buy more than once. Because it would have to be if it's all in language and words, right? So to cut down on printing, you're not duplicating. How many cards do you have? You have seven, I think. Uh, three, six, seven, I guess eight if you count the stat one. Right. But that's really just seven. So from like a cost and packing point of view, you're reducing the amount of cards you need to print by 49, right? So let's say it's seven, seven language packaging with seven things in there. You got to put it in seven ability cards. Okay, great. But you're not putting in 49 character yeah. cards all of a sudden with that name. But that, that decision from a component design point of view is inherently putting an anchor on the game design now. You have to fit all of the special information for your warband, including all the models and names, on this one double-sided card. Yeah. So that's a, that's a commentary on that push between your component design and what you're trying to do component-wise and how now you can format and make rules, right? Because you've, you've put a weight, basically, on the amount of stuff that can be on here. And they've already inherently got a limitation because... Everyone's got one quad, two triples, and three doubles, I think, on this thing. I think that's what, because that's what I have. Do you have a quad? Two triples, three doubles? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I guess the decision's already made, I guess, but you wouldn't have to have all the information be on this one ability card if you could do some printing on those cards. So it's, it's worth talking about in so much that you can kind of get an example of, from a, from a beginning of a product design point of view, you're, there's that old joke that a, uh, a donkey is a horse made by committee. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you have a committee process where someone's working on the component design and it's inherently making a, a format or a structure that has to be obeyed now from the game design point of view. So because this was done, and, and it may be that it happened in the reverse order, maybe they designed the rules from the get-go to be able to be doing this thing with the packaging, but you have limited now what you're going to be what you're going to be able to put on that one card. Why not make this blank like Arena? I don't know. Or Necromunda. 
I don't mind it. Yeah. Have it then, fillable. Like, Actually, for kill team too, have it be fillable. Like you could take these guys and have a little sheet that has all your stats, like this. Yep. And then you just have the numbers running next to them with the names, and then you just send blank versions of these. Yeah. And it would do. I mean, there's a symbol tie-in, but you would just not do that, <laughs> or or you just have the symbol and you know that those guys are part of that symbol. Yeah. And now you don't run into the problem that like. I'm using this artwork, like this picture of this miniature, right? As this guy, like I can't. That's what's. It gets into miniatures, but. Well, we're, yeah. we're getting to a, we're getting to a spot now where we're we're basically talking about the pros and cons of infographics and how that's affected the product design. And per, personally, for me, I don't like infographics because we had a whole conversation earlier about the difference between the beast symbol on the chaotic beasts cards and the, and beast, the beast symbol, symbol on, on your card. ability card. Because they're almost identical, with one's got like She's a little a bit little of a horn. star or a horn or something like that, but they look almost the same. And we weren't really able to decipher via the infographic whether one... Because they're both obviously beasts, but if you get a Thrall Beast, can they use your Beastmaster abilities? We couldn't really tell. And they're so similar infographically-wise, that's one of the, the drawbacks and limitations of infographics. Yeah. So, so the two of them, I'll describe it to you. Imagine a bull with a horn, right? And then there's one of them has a triangle behind the bow with the horn, right. and the other one has a triangle behind it, but there's no top point. That's, <laughs> that's the difference that's between the two of them. Yeah, that's and, the only and difference. And they're they're what like a centimeter tall. Yeah, they're they're a half centimeter tall, I'd say. Like yeah, maybe three quarters of a centimeter tall. They're, so like you're you're trying to fit a bunch of information in there, and you can't duplicate symbol. Like you you got to be able to recognize what these symbols mean and why. Um, and that's, that's a product design choice. Obviously there's things driving that from just the point of view of like, we can make this go into lots of different languages, but it did impact our ability to understand things and slow down our process of absorbing information. Whereas if it was just written out as has been traditionally done in other games. We just see what the answer Use is. Use some kind of <laughs> keyword system. <laughs> well, it's, it's different. <laughs> um, I did like that you got decks for everything and you reprinted the decks um, in the book, I wish they just printed the model decks in the book too, though, because you oh, like what of all the different classes abilities? Just what you're just even just pictures, like because you don't need to know anything else. Like if you got the ability table and all the cards, it's maybe two pages at most. Well, there's pictures of the current ones right now, right? There, there is, and I'm sure maybe it'll be free online somewhere, and this comment won't be relevant. But from the outset, like let's say you're you're just opening this box by itself. Yeah. And you're seeing your your it's not that you're not on the internet, but you're not going to the internet to find your information. The information for all of the other cool factions which are talked about in the rule book just simply doesn't exist. Yeah. It's, it's four not of in them there. don't show up really. They're yeah. lore and that's it. And, and then a silhouette. Not even artwork. Just a silhouette. Well those are purchasing decision makers too, right? Like if I want to go buy a box I see what it looks like in this rule book, but yeah. I don't know what it does. Why do I like that's for some people that's a key feature, right? Is what it does in the game. And so the decision not to put that in the as, in the a, as a feature and yeah. have that in the rule book can impact people's purchasing. So it's just it feels like with eight more pages you could have had all of the faction cards in there and you know, you you'd have you'd have a lot more information than you do now basically about what's in the yep. game. And it's it's I think maybe it stands in such stark relief because you didn't have um, that problem with Kill Team. With Kill Team, you had all the information right there in the rule book. You had this nice fat rule book, and people got to pour over it and obsess over it. Especially and read that it. this is so close to Kill Team it in is. in the Age of Sigmar Kill Team, and like, in component design, like the box yeah. is identical, right? Like it just from if you were to pick us up on the shelf, you would think they were like brother yeah. and sister product, right? Yep. Um, so let's talk about the models then. So there's the component stuff, and then when we're done this, we'll give our, our ratings. So the miniatures, what do you think about them? I mean, they're they're good miniatures. Um, the problem I run into is every box of these will look the same. the 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 way that they cut miniatures now, like the way that they're being three D cut, right, makes it so that everyone fits together just right, and they come out looking just right, with like one exception. There's one of the planes runner's His arms. Elbows. He has an elbow that just floats, so you've got to kind of make it work. <laughs> but everyone nice else paint. is like like slide that in there and there and like they'll stand up basically on their own like you barely even need to glue them together because they'll just hold themselves together with how well designed it is but in doing so like you have like left arm neck and like back are one piece and then like front left leg torso and other arm are a second piece you're not customizing that guy like no. and your warband can only include one of some things you can only include one of the heart eaters right so like you're never going to build that guy again. And not only are you never going to build that guy again, but he's always going to look like this. 
Yeah. When all the heart eaters come together, they're all going to be guys standing there with axe in the air and hand thing. <laughs> he's huge too. You made a comment about that when you first built him. He scales like, this, all over this the place. This guy's scale is in, like you compare him to the planes run, he's just like infused with the power of chaos. He's just enormous. How many options did you have in your kit? Was it this one? This is it. Uh, the one. one option I had right. was give one guy who had a sword an axe instead. The prey right. taker could have had a sawtooth blade or a fanged axe. I had two. I could give the preceptor a banner, an icon, yeah. or I can give him the uh, the hammer and the severed helmet. Head. Right. Uh, and then my other one was my third Iron Legionnaire can have the big bola, the whip thing, yep. or he can have two hammers. So he can right. be like an up-close melee hitter or a reach over the shields to hit guys with bolas, which is yeah. whips, which is what you would do. Um, um, but other than that, that was, that was the only options I had. I had two options out of the box. So, uh, so it's few options and set poses. Well, and then with what you got on the sprues too, we got exact, I got 975 points and you got a thousand points. Right. Uh, the chaotic beasts do add to that after a couple games. If you've raised the territory, like now that we're playing, we played three games and we've got, we've gotten, I won't spoil it, but we've gotten advances enough that some people can hire some of the chaotic beasts as thralls, which is cool. Yeah. So it gives you a few extra options, but there isn't really any component of, except for two choices for me and one choice for you. You're playing. You're always playing with the same warband out of the box, and that was another thing that Kill Team didn't have, right? Kill yeah. Team, the the Skatari in particular, could take like three or four different configurations yeah. of guys. Scene Steelers had enough guys that a bunch of different, different guns. Ones. Yeah, yeah, your leader could be differently differently equipped. And stuff you're bringing too. the same weapons in the same list, game after game, until you buy no more. Right. Um, and then let's talk about the terrain. So the terrain, it's it's really easy to build. It's super modular. There'll be lots and lots of different ways of building the um, the the like the buildings and stuff that come in there. But my one like sort of quibble with it is to use the the train cards. It all has to be built a certain way. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't explain to you how to build the buildings. It just shows you all the building pieces in the in the information booklet, and you have to kind of figure it out from looking at pictures. And that was my my one kind of struggle. Now, luckily, I built enough stuff the right way that we were able to play our first three games with no problems. But yeah. we have four buildings left to build. You could have built it wrong. I could have just yeah. built it wrong. And it was like, we the train cards don't work anymore. And it doesn't really tell you that in the building instructions. So keep to a... be aware. Keep a, Yeah, keep a yeah. close eye on the front of the thing. If you want to use the train cards exactly as described, you got to kind of eyeball the big color picture on the front and figure out exactly how you're going to do it um, to make them exactly the same way as on the train cards that you can use the train cards, which you're asked to do. Uh, and, and that is the third thing is that the train cards do, and this is a component slash model thing. They do say that you have to get your opponent's permission to use a different piece of train than the ones on the train cards. So they are selling extra train packs. We've already seen there's the mausoleum one and the Azerite ruins one, yep. which will get you a new terrain card pack too, for dealing those ones out and new, new boards to play on. But bear that in mind, if you're making your own at home collection of stuff, Either make up your own train cards, or it's a, there's for people that are very into like doing the official way of playing the rules. It does ask you to do this set to the cards, basically. Right. Um, it's like a big key component of the game. So uh, out of five, how do you feel about? It? And so five, well, one is like there were some huge flaws. Five is knocked out of the park. Zero issues. Completely perfect. How do you feel about components? It's like three. Yeah, it's fine. Like. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Like, there's no thing that I'm like, oh, this makes it horrible. It's just like everything functions. You're not, you're not getting anything that's like particularly difficult to understand. And I don't expect any of these to fall apart anytime soon. Right. They're all good quality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'd say the component quality, I'm going to give it a four. Um, mostly based on the fact that there's a real like toughness and uh, thought being put into things like the matte finish on the cards, um, the matte finish on the tokens. I, the, the, the reason it's not a home run for me is because there's some things that were kind of forgotten, I think, like the D10 and just uh, if it, from thinking about how not many dice to put in the box. Yeah, like... just if, if you'd played the game, if you're asking yourself that question, how if I put enough of this stuff in this box to make right. it playable for both sides and really convenient, they put in two of every uh, like um, uh, universal sheet for like the Chaos Beast and two sets of that. So if, if both players are playing with them, they remembered to do that. They didn't right. put enough D6s in, which is something they use all the time. So it, that for me, that's why it's not like a home run uh, is because there was some like the people doing the product, I think should have played if they'd had some touch testing, you know what I mean? Like and done yeah. the experience, they might've, they might've thought about how many of these should we put in. And then the, the fact there's only one rule summary sheet as opposed to two, it's it, just little things like that, that I think keep it from being a five for me. So what about the models? They're great models. I mean, they're they're the current age GW 
3D designed and then cut to perfectly go together right. with exactly the pieces you need to make them on one sprue, ready to go. There was a bit of like, use the piece from, from sprue B number 20, but it's on a different sprue than where it says it is. Right. Um, was it this game? I think so. There's somewhere they didn't <laughs> they do, have They the do numbers. clip the sprue in half sometimes too, which yeah. can lead to like a 20 being in a weird spot. Like all the low numbers in one spot, like one high numbers in there. Right. Which is occasionally confused me. I can't me. remember. I built a lot of models the last... And <laughs> it was a long night when I built these. It was for both um, of us. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that it was this one that doesn't have numbers for some of the guys that you go to build. Got it. It just shows pictures of the pieces. I think so. One or two in the instruction booklet. Yeah, in gotcha. the instruction, like how to build, which like... I, I actually didn't... I looked at pictures of the models and then just kind of put I all the it. put them all in piles and then I just built them all. One nice thing I've noticed is they have been doing consecutive numbers per miniature. Yes. So usually like 20 through 28 is, is a that single guy. miniature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I usually just find the low number and find the high number on that model, Everything clip all those pieces, yeah. and then just eyeball it afterwards. Yeah. Um, and and they go together really well that's there. A, that's, a, well, that's a really clever little thing to think about because like in the past, there have been times where we just clipped all over 20 the frame. 20A, 20B, 20 and, and it's 20B. Like, like 37, like the night sometimes. It's like 37, 60. Like, and you're like jumping all over the place yeah. whereas these ones were just like this guy is these consecutive numbers yeah the only thing is the lack of lack of conversion options that makes it not yeah i think i think i'm in the same boat um so what's your score four yeah four. they're good miniatures yeah. you're not going to get miniatures that are as easy to build or as nice as these no. the only downside that doesn't make them great is that the way they're designed you can't customize them they yeah. are what they are and what's more is that the rules themselves feed into it that's this guy. Yeah, we're and the next box of those. The next guy. box of those you buy, you're getting not. You're getting eight guys instead of nine because the guy, the leader. You're guy getting. You're, you're getting two left. Like, and they're all identical. They're yeah. all like that. Like, there's no. There's no guy who's going to be. They cool are looking. plastic though. You can cut and repose them. I mean, there's yeah. the argument that you can do that, but it isn't the old modularity where they're designed to be. Different. So, like this this model here, the uh, the head taker, the, the first fang, the first fang. Yeah. Sorry, the chain that comes off of and like hangs off of the bottom of his spear. That's a piece off the torso. Oh. And then the arm and the spear are another piece, right. and they slot in, and then there's a hook on the end of that to latch it onto the spear. Oh, jeez. What are you doing there? Like, I don't know how you're cutting that up. You're, yeah. you're cutting that into pieces to decide how you want to pose that arm? Well, Find some brass rod like, and some modeling chains, what you're doing. Like how far down the line <laughs> are you going to go with, instead of like, I pose my shoulders like that, or like this, which you could have done. Right. It's not how it is, though. And yeah. they look nicer for it but they're only going to look like that. Yeah, I think it's a four out of five for me as well for most of the same reasons you said. Um, I love I love the design of the miniatures, right? Like the look of them. They, they're they evocative. And the scale is all and over the place. That gets me too. But whatever. <laughs> that, that could be a lore thing. <laughs> and people are different sizes. Um, the, uh, the the design is gorgeous. The Like the different like aesthetics for each of the warband is is fantastic. You can't say that Citadel is not, not doing a great job concepting what they're sculpting and making. Um, I would say, honestly, of, like, the six factions we've seen, the uh, the Untamed Beasts are actually my least favorite, interestingly four? enough. No, we've seen six. There's the, the bird people, oh, that's the right, zinch birds. people, snake people, the snake people, and the two. unmade, the, the arms and legs cut off yeah. guys, in addition to these ones. Right. Um, I would say, honestly, and maybe it's just because they have such heroic proportions on, like, all of their accessories and stuff. They, they're the most old schooly looking to me. You know, they've got the most kind of, like, old school chaos, like, aesthetic to them. Um, but even still, they're great, they're great miniatures. Uh, for me, again, it's the same thing. It's um, I don't get as much... If part of the fun for you is building toy soldiers, that fun is partially now taken away. machine That's building. right, because the machines built them for you and you're assembling them, if that yeah. makes sense. You're, you're removed from that design process, um, and that's something that historically, for a lot, of, a lot of customers buying this product, is a big chunk of their hobby, is making their miniature unique by building it. Even if they're not converting it or using models outside the kit. Rounded like, elbows. Yeah, rounded just, shoulders. just, just making, them, making them pose a different way. I mean, that was, that was a huge part of the fun of the new Necromunda, was you had all these bits that you could um, you know, cut, convert, and they released more bits in the future and stuff. And they may do that here, but it's going to be way harder to release like accessory frames for these miniatures versus just releasing you, you have to make a whole new, a model. Whole new variant who box. has That's that right. variant like built in yeah which means that which means that instead of having uh this you know like whatever you do, you're doing an expansion box which is cool because they could release new profiles and stuff that way too I, I think there's lots of design space for doing that but if part of the fun for you was making each miniature unique in yours with what comes in the box, that's been removed a bit for people that that I'm was part of their hobby. Fairly sure that only two miniatures out of the nine in here, both of their legs were attached to their hips. Right. 
So like to give you an idea of like how much you can't of even it swivel is like the waist. like there that's you don't even get that and even that right. doesn't work because of the way the torso ties into the loincloths and stuff you can't rotate it it fits one way and that's it right it, like you're getting what you're getting but if you, if you look at the picture that's what you will make yeah. <laughs> and if, you're, that, if you're without without you having probably a won't lot be painted cutting. like that yeah. but he's gonna look like that but you gotta do a lot of cutting to get there if you're gonna make them different yeah. Um, the uh, the monster models are nice. You do get enough monster models for two people because you you're never really going to need more than one of the frames of monsters, which is three harpies and three raptrixes, um, which means that you effectively get enough in the box for two players, which is good. And that's a that's a great like we've included enough stuff there for it. So yeah, so four to five for me. Don't um, know what's up with the beards? I, <laughs> the beards? They're I don't know, man. Chaos beards. They uh, he's talking about the harpies. The um, the trinket is fantastic. I do like that it's modular. You can make it different ways. I do think that there's some some sort of like friction between the way the game's designed and that though, because you needed to put instructions in there for how to make them exactly the way they are in the cards for certain people. Because if you're trying to make it easy and so that people can't screw it up, you got to go all the way. You, know, you can't do it for yeah. most of it, but then just stop at one point with probably the biggest amount of frames in the box right. <laughs> if the, building the warbands is idiot proof building the, the the highest percentage of things on frames in that box requires you to like do some guessing and some eyeballing and stuff um so overall that's going to give us a 3.5 out of 5 for components and a uh 8 out of 10 so i'm sorry 4 to 5 um for models which is 7.5 out of 10 it's going to be a 3.75 out of 5 so three and three quarter stars. Uh, game design. So let's talk about the core engine, the the thing under the hood where people are moving around and doing stuff. How'd you feel about that? There's not a lot going on. Move act, move act, move move act act. Okay, so so what do you mean? There's not a lot going on. Um, there's no play counterplay. There's no defensive role. There's okay. only actions, and then it's action economy. Where you stand and how many actions it takes to do a job is right. all that you're going to measure in this entire game. The only thing that you have that can kind of break that up is the random dice roll that you can influence one piece of every other turn or every turn that has abilities based on your faction that influence those number of dice or number of move. And otherwise, it is a case of stand on button or stand next to guy. And, and like I said, just controlling the number of Push actions you have. Yeah. Um, Feels a little rts I, I mean, if you were playing a bad RTS, like... <laughs> <laughs> it, the the point of these games is like in RTSs anyway is like you have multiple instances and multiple options and different ways of approach. I don't know if you actually have that here. Um, we don't have enough models for me to really dig into like what you can do to that action yeah, economy. This is first blush, yeah. Um, the immediate response I had was like spam. Like you your missions, you, there is an action to disengage, action to attack, action to move. If disengage costs an action from a guy who has less actions, no matter how good he is, he's less effective than a little guy who can engage. Right. Because all you need to do is hold him there, and then if he needs to go do a job, he has to spend one action, whether it's to kill or to walk three inches, but it ain't what he wants to do. And I can just stall for time, or I can go up and f sacrifice models to waste your actions. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I started doing that in the second game, and you noticed. I realized I just right away when I was running like, guys into you to make oh, it so you had this to pull is, back. This is going to be difficult. Yeah. And and I mean, I got over it, but mostly through luck. Like it was only like a good dice roll at the end that decided yep. that game. That's true. I was being outplayed because it was he had the right models and it was able to sacrifice guys because he didn't need them. Like yep. I don't, I would need my guys to accomplish that mission. But you just play to not need those. Like yeah. this is the Hormagons with the warrior. Yeah, like, there, this is, there, there is a, there is a bit of that I found um, in, like you said, because there's, it's an action economy game. Being able to purchase more actions and stand in places, or even just buy more attacks, even if they're little attacks, but yep. just wear people down, um, does seem like it has inherently in the mission structure or in the game structure, the core engine, a lot of value. Um, if you haven't watched, I, to actually get some concepts, if you haven't played the game or watched us play it, I do recommend at this stage. Either go um, watch my how to play video, I'll link it up in the cards here, which will go through the core engine of the game, um, or watch the let's play where we do it like live. But the, the core effect is an initiative role, like Owen said, that is going to create random boosts off your ability table and also off a universal table. 
where people can sometimes get free actions. Um, they can add dice to their actions or be stronger during their actions. Yeah. Um, and then you have two actions of which you can do four things. You can either move your movement stat, you can fall back away from an inch from the enemy, three inches, which is fixed, so you don't get your full movement for that. Um, you can make a swing with one of your weapons, or you can wait. And if you wait, you forgo one of your actions to do a single action later on and be activated again. Uh, all of these things, and especially the wait action, really does lend into this like belief of like action economy being one of the, one of the most powerful things. And I think you're right. I think you're going to see that whoever has cheap, fast troops. If you want to watch how this game will eventually boil down, it's the Hormagon game against the Custodes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Where like it doesn't matter how good you are, yeah, I true. will just touch you, and then you and can do team. nothing, and then yeah. I can touch you, and you do nothing, and. That's that's what I see. Well, especially when you here. can't you can't fall back in this game your full movement either. So even okay. fast folks are limited to a three inch fallback. Yeah. When they fall back. Like the actual combat of X number of attack dice and then greater than, less than, equal to strength mods for what you need to roll as a target. That's really easy. And then like they a have six stripped is good. The, they've stripped the stats down to three. Yeah. Strength, toughness, and uh, and your your movement value. Yeah. That's really it. Because there's no there's nothing else in the game. There is damage and yeah, wounds it, it's true but but the only comp so i guess i'd say compare like the the most influential stats in the game are going to be your your strength your toughness because those are the things that affect each other but and like then your, your movement with that you you can't visually see what makes one thing one thing no, and true. another another yep. like look at the top four for the beast folks that i was playing so you have a, a huge dude with a spear and a giant axe a huge dude with a giant axe and a giant claw a lady with a whip and a cat and the cat and the axe are a, th a quarter tougher and both are stronger and slightly this either faster or the same speed as the others. Right. And the other two lose five health off of them and attack damage and damage output. Right. And you go, they all look the same. Like, like these two dudes they're, they're visually are literally identical. like the same guy, just yeah. armed differently. But this guy is objectively tougher. And better. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'd go with better, but like definitely tougher. He's got five extra health. Right. And he's faster. And you go, well, why? Well, we can get to that when we talk about factions. Let's get the, how people are different. Well, I'm just talking about, like, the core your guys, yeah. I can't tell them apart. Like, yeah, yeah. are they T4? And why are they T4? Is it because they're wearing armor? Or is that why they have extra two wounds? Right. What was the deciding factor that made them that much tougher and well, or have more wounds? Right. Well, like, again, that, 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 what I'm talking about still is the core mechanic of they've removed entire processes from other games. Yep. There's no to hit roll and there's no save roll. So you've taken a three-step pro three process down to one process. And what they've done to mitigate that is they've increased the amount of damage everyone can take exponentially. Yep. So a, a one-wound Warhammer model in Age of Sigmar has ten wounds in this game. Yeah. And, and proportionally Probably more attacks as well. Yeah. But there's literally only one interaction. You pick up dice and you see if you make a wound roll. And it uses the same 40k wound roll mechanics of higher, equal, or less. Yeah. There's no doubles, so it's always, it's always three, four, five. three, four, five that you're looking to roll. And, and the, the six, six is always critical. Expended. Yeah, that's right. Which means, and the six critical being um, that you always want to have more attacks than the because you're fishing for sixes. Is huge. Like, the damage swings immensely. Like this guy goes from one to four. Yeah, it's four hundred times more damage. Yeah, four hundred more damage <laughs> versus a hundred percent more damage for the ogre, but his base damage is four, so it's four right. to eight. But um, even then, like, but his attack rate is way lower. But it also means if you buy him an attack, it's it's way more influential. Yep. So it's it's interesting because like it feels like. It does make the game very quick, removing two thirds of the processes. Yep. You're not you're not making any save rolls, but it also does mean that when it's not your turn, you have you no influence. You yeah. have no influence on what's happening. You can't you during there's no your, reactive ability. exactly. There's no reactive thing at all. There's no CPs. There's no re-rolling. It's it's literally you are at the mercy of your opponent during their entire. Imagine activation. if this game was you out, you go I go with everyone. Oh wow! You Would do this it. even be a game? No, you couldn't. Like, you couldn't. Do the it. only thing that keeps this going is the fact that we alternate activations. Yeah, you can't jump on people. And like, and some people can actually. The leader, all the leaders have the leader ability where they can inspirational presence and have another twice. guy immediately attack. Yeah, have another yeah. guy immediately attack. It costs you, I think, a triple. So it's a double. It's a double for you. Yeah. Really? It's double for my guys. Uh, triple. No, it's a universal ability. It's a triple. Unless you have your own. No, I don't have my own. Okay. Right. <laughs> so I had to drip off the university. I was like, what? <laughs> and we got mis so, misprinted yeah. cards. <laughs> I was looking at the all-out attack. Right, where if no. he kills a guy, the, he moves and attacks again. Yeah, the, the leader one here is uh, is, is giving again. you a double move, which is pretty cool. And then being able to buy free actions as well is really cool. Um, so yes, yeah, so the core mechanics are really simple, and but they are very adversarial. 
It is it is um, alternate activations, but during your opponent's activation, you have almost no control over what's happening. Which is why just the way damage. to do it is reduce the number of actions your opponent gets. Right. Like, that's why I think that's the way to go. I mean, if you're looking to get into it, just don't take, Taking lots of little guys. <laughs> Ten little guys for 550. Well, you're maxed out at 15. There's a hard cap. Ten little guys for 550. Okay. Then and I then... bring Kitty Kitty Leader. <laughs> Like, no, you want you want. I think you still want Kitty Kitty Speaker because Kitty Speaker giving Kitty free action can maybe be more valuable than another Kitty. Maybe or you want two Kitties. I don't know. Maybe two Kitties. <laughs> <laughs> can you do Kitty Kitty Leader? It's one eighty. One eighty is three sixty. And how much is the leader? One eighty. You can't do it then. It'll be too much. All right, Kitty Speaker Leader. He's one <laughs> one twenty five for her. That could be possible because you'd be two hundred five plus what? Five fifty. Plus, no, two hundred five was the boss. The boss is one eighty. 205, sorry, two, 305 plus 180. No, you'd still be too much. You'd have nine probably, and then those three. There you, you go. You had 12 guys. 12 guys if you had nothing but plain speakers. Or you could upgrade maybe one of them if you have a slightly more expensive guy. The next jump is 105. Okay, well then no. Because yeah. you don't have any 70 point dudes. There's no middle tier. <laughs> yeah. And so you can hire a beastie, they could bring a harpy in there and have a flying a flying wing yeah. or whatever. But then 12 models, I mean, you'd be, you're out you're out activating my starting warband with 12 models by four. By four. Yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. That's a big thing. And, 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 and I'm faster on every guy. Yes, you are. You're an inch faster on every guy. Um, so let's talk about the factions then. We've talked about, I mean, you started to bleed into it there. Um, but for the factions themselves, how did you feel about just how they, like, what made them different? What made them interesting? And they don't feel different. We feel like the same guys. Like, you're slightly tougher. I'm slightly faster. But, it, like, when the crunch comes down, kill a guy or hold his own, it doesn't matter. It's right. number of bodies. And, and we, like, have, we, have this, we have literally the same leader ability, don't we? Do you have uh, uh, double lead with strength? No, my it's where you get a free. Do you get a free bonus action or a bonus attack action? We have we have different abilities on see, these cards. There was one of these that like, I thought was the same. I don't think so. I think they're all different. Uh, or if they're very similar, maybe. No, it's all attack. It's the exact exact same. All oh, attack okay. and, and lead by strength are they have different names, but they are the same ability. Um, if someone's been killed, you can make a bonus move or bonus attack. Yeah, we have we have literally the same leader ability, um, which I thought was interesting. So so out of just goes to show how little different we are. Well, I was gonna say out of six yeah. abilities, f we only have five that are actually different that make us unique, um, and then of course our raw stats. And our raw stats are different. A point of movement versus a point of defense. Defense, I think, is more valuable than movement in this game, though. Because being the difference between being defense five and being defense four is a huge deal. But I think yeah. most of your warband wounds my regular pleb shield guys on fives, five. which with 10, 10 health is a lot. Yeah. Well, if you're defense four, most of mine are. If you're defense five, yeah, it's a lot. But everyone's four. Three of my guys are five. Yeah. So almost half my warband is five. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. None of my guys are strength five. They I mean, off the bat the, nobody is. The raw stats feel like the biggest place where people are different, but then everyone kind of has like a wombo combo, right? right? I have if I get quad sixes, I could potentially do six damage to everyone within three inches of my drill master. I've yet to get that off in the game. Because I've always found that um the other one, uh the like rampage is just better. Yeah. Because I need to move I got a free move and a free attack, and I'm I'm I always want to be standing somewhere else anyway. <laughs> Uh, and then what was my other one? Stand Defiant. I need to have a special miniature. I need to take the guy with the icon who hits not as hard. So I'm already locked out of one of my six by not yep. building that miniature, basically. Did you have anything that was like that where you couldn't? If I had not brought out? the kitty, I lose an ability. Or if I don't lose But it's my not like master. the kitty's an option when you build them anyway. Yeah. So, so. With, with, the, with the requirement of the models in my box are what I need to bring to yeah. be able to play. I can use it all. And I literally just went by what looked cooler. Yeah. <laughs> and and actually, the guy with the hammers, I think, is even more points. I think the icon guy is actually cheaper, Could which be. meant that I'd be even down more points if I'd taken him. Because that was what I was looking at initially. Yeah, he's 120 versus... How much is Hammer Man, the preceptor of the hammer? He is 125. So I went with the more expensive option because I was trying to fill in points to get to 1,000. And I locked myself out of one of my, my abilities for my Warband, too. So, I mean, the bonuses, you can add expanded content here in the factions, and this kind of ties component design to the, the faction rules. Like, if they do do a Iron Golems box 2, there right. could be all new model types in there. Yep. Right? They could do a whole bunch of new model types. Um, but, that guy's never going to change. But that, but well, and my abilities aren't going to change either, unless they also give us more abilities at some point. Yeah. Just more things to spend doubles, triples, quads on, which then they you could can do. Get another book, and another, another book, and then another. But, book, and then but it's not a right book. But it's not a book because it's coming in the boxes. Card, 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 card. Yeah, it'd be more cards then at that point. You have more cards you're going to be playing with. Um, but I, I think so. I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak too much about how they're the same, 
because I do think that right now we're limited by what comes in the box set. And they did feel different That's enough to me. About. No, but they did feel different enough to me to make it to make it so that I thought I felt that there was a healthy amount of faction differences. I see. In context, I'm just saying to the box set. Like right. you felt faster. Your planes where I just died if I hit them, which made them feel squishy and fast, versus my guys taking forever to die because they're all defense five or the toughest five and uh, and low movement and have two more points of health on you. So that it felt okay to me. I. I'm not in... I think the difference yeah, is... It doesn't really make sense how I'm, I won. I mostly just diced you. Yeah. <laughs> like, because that, like, math says I should lose. Yes. Yes. I. But for me, it's also about how the mechanics were reflected by the faction rules. Uh, and the, the, theme, the theme of the factions was reflected, too. And I did feel like my faction was the tanky, like, you know, tough yeah. guys. And yours was the, the heavier hitting. And, like, occasionally guys would just hulk out. Which I thought was cool. Like yeah. these light glass cans would occasionally just hulk out and kill me. Like when you got that quad where like Every you time got you plus go, three attacks or whatever, yeah. like it did feel like it was thematically cool. If you can get a quad five or six, happen. you can you can usually just remove them. Just model, pull like somebody's here. arms and legs off. Yeah, yeah, you have your Conan moment and just like freak out and start pulling arms and legs off. And that to me felt that's that's what I want from faction mechanics. I want the rules to reflect how they should be in the background. You know what I mean? And it, to me it succeeded in doing that. I don't think it's I don't, I think that the game does like the the core engine and the way the product design has limited how much you can do there without just releasing new units and products, right? So that's that's I mean we'll talk about that later on, but um, it did enough of a good job that I'm happy with where they sat at. So let's talk last about the campaigns and scenarios. So the what you do in the table. Uh, scenarios are great. I thought that was one of the big strengths of this for me. The progressively yeah. generated scenario is you're never going to play this if you're just playing the core missions. You're really never going to play the same game twice. No, because there's like at least there's 40 four or instances of dice or cards that are going to affect it. Yeah, and then you're each flipping one of them. So like, even if there's 30 cards in each one, 30 times four it's times 120 four, cards. Like, yeah. yeah, it's 120 times 120 possible variations. So you're even about, more than that because each one times it? three. Oh, that's right. No, because yeah. it's, it's it's like it's to a cube or a. a that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, To the power of four, uh, 120 times something like that. Yeah. It's a it's a huge number of variations basically. One 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 two yeah. one 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 three and like yeah. you do that thirty times and then thirty and then thirty and then thirty and then thirty 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 yeah. and yeah. That it's, that's gonna add a bunch a of replayability. Lot. You're you're never gonna get really the same combination very often or, or ever maybe even play this game depends on how many times you play it. Um, and one of the biggest strengths I think in the game design for me was that they put that progressive design in there. Yeah. I wish Kill Team had something like that. I wish they killed. I mean, it does a little bit with the secondaries now. Yeah, I would almost go so far as to say I'd like those cards in basically any skirmish game. Oh, for sure. Pick a skirmish game. Well, they have them for AOS. In... It's funny. They have the open war cards for 40k and OS. We just never use them. Like, we have them for both. It's these already are existed. Way more interesting. <laughs> <That's>, okay. <laughs> that, you know, the only difference between these ones and the AOS ones is that you get a scenery one in this one. Relevant. That's super, and that's super relevant, actually. You get a, you get a scenery one. And it's not on a 6x4. Yep. It's a little more intimate too, but uh, I thought for me the the campaign the campaign scenario design, the scenario design is, design is fantastic. For me, I, I already I mean I said this I think last week this wasn't going to be more time it was never going to be more time you can't make more time again. This game this game isn't being written by people I think that grew up on the same pen and paper diet of like entertainment that that the older versions of these games were built into and even the rest of the proc design making it easy to build easy to play it's not asking a lot of the people building it there's not going to be that same level of customization you can't write a customizable campaign system when you're not providing people with customizable models yes and right? with this little to do with your models you can't customize them nope, nope. You get, so you, you can get, get a buff once you get a reroll. You get a reroll. You can learn. You can learn rerolls, and you can find heal pots. Basically, you can buy. Yeah. You can find disposable equipment, and your leader can occasionally you can get have an a, artifact. A one-off stat mod. Yeah, and and that's it, really. And and I mean, you don't have a lot of stats either. Like the core game oh, mechanic. There are doesn't... only three stats that you will mod. It's defense. <laughs> it. Sorry, four defense, move, hit, damage. Well, I mean, you only have really have three core stats because you'd have to pick which weapon you gave the other ones too. If you have more than one weapon too, right? So like, it's really just hit points, move, toughness that you would be ever modifying. Right. That's like your stat. Number of and your wounds. We your weapon is has its strength attached to it, right? So like, it's yeah. not like you're ever even modifying that. It's more like Dark Age with um, assault groups or Ragnarok right. with um, uh, weapons. Like the sword does a certain amount of damage versus the hammer or the the, the spear or whatever. Uh, and for me, I mean, that's it. Gives you a reason to play. 
a bunch of link scenarios, which I like. You're, you're, you have a reason to go to the next level and do the next thing. Then it gets, it takes we'll two talk, steps back. Well, we'll talk about that when we get to playability, because I think that's the, the campaign system itself has an inherent limitation. You'd be better in not playing it. <laughs> that's you're, my opinion. It's actually, it's more. I think it's more entertaining and random in one-off games almost. Yeah. Because of the way that the, the stuff's... And like, I mean, for most of the campaign, you are generating random scenarios anyway. Right, but you're... Like, the progression in it. The three in that set campaign. pieces, yeah. That, that is, and, and the way dominating territory works. You're going yes. to harm your own, like, ability to have fun when one guy gets to come with an extra 200 points. That's it. When you get an extra... Yeah, exactly, yeah. If someone, if someone runs away with a, a couple games in a row, and all of a sudden they've built two or three territories up. And a lot of people are going to play this against one other person out of the box. Let's not... Let's not you know, they mess reference with the idea. in the box the idea of having, like... Like, think leagues, where you come in and you play, like, the random guy, and then, the like... The average hobbyist playing in their basement is going to play this with their one friend that's also playing Warhammer, right? True. And that's, to me, to me, that's part of this, like, playability test, which we'll talk about at the end, is you you bump into some inherent mechanical disadvantages when you're not playing this in a store, in a league, or with right. a bunch of people. Um, like, we, we came into today. Not that you wouldn't <laughs> run into those in the league and the people anyway. But like... if you have a random pairing and someone hasn't played as many games yet, you could probably find a person who's at a stage in the campaign to play you with that's appropriate. You know what I mean? Versus if it's just the two of you, yep. you're always stuck playing the same person over and over again. Um, so what's your, what's, let's do our scoring then. So for your uh, thoughts on the core engine out of five. I mean, it depends what you want out of it. It's what like, do you want out of it. That's what matters. Like what I want out of it, yeah. it's like a two. Okay. It barely gets above one. Yep. I wouldn't. I wouldn't play this. Like <laughs> I would. I would take all of the pieces around the mechanics and put them in a game I like. Right. Like I would. I would take the scenario. I would take the scoring. I would take the deployment and go play Company of Iron. I right. would take those and go play Relic Blade. I would take those and go play Dark Age. So core mechanics, it's a two for you. What yeah. about the factions and the faction differences? They're the same. Uh, um, they're not. It, they're not the same though, because there's the what you're doing, and then there's the what you're doing it with. Right. Uh, you're going to use seventy point guys, and I'm going to use fifty five point guys, and we're going to see who can win on the hold the zones <laughs> game. And, and like, oh, yours are plus one toughness. I'm plus one speed. I guess I'm going to die then. <laughs> okay, we'll give me a score. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't like scores. I know. But I'm asking you for them. Just give me a score. Three. Okay, three. I'm gonna go vanilla. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> but I mean, you don't. You don't seem to have. I think that's fair because you don't seem to have a strong opinion one way or the other. Because yeah. it's just, it's it's for you. It's all endemic of the core mechanic. And what about the campaigns and scenarios? I they do. Those, go, they go I together, wish those were two separate. But they're spots. not. They can't be. Wow. Well, then I have to. I'll give it's it the, the what you're playing for. One. The scenarios are like a five, but okay. the campaign's like a one. Because you don't care about the campaign at all. Because it 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 hurts the ability to play the game. Like that's is it really a, it. is it really a one though? I don't think it's a one. It functions. It doesn't not function. I guess it does technically function. It is, it is five what ten dots that I write in a dot beside to make it feel like I'm playing two consecutive. games. We got games. some MacGuffins. We got some fun out of it. We got some rolling for stuff. We got some some tater tots when we finish the yep. game and okay. get to extra dudes. We'll give it a two then. <laughs> all right so in between over three and then i give it a, a, a 6.5 <laughs> with what with what you I mean, said 2.2.4 with what you said i don't loving part of it and hating part of it i don't think you can give it a one that's what i'm saying well, I, mean, I think that's that it, it saying. doesn't back up what you're saying um so for me the core engine i'm gonna give it a three it's functional it's simple it's easy to understand uh again it inherently puts a weight on some later things like the factions and the scenarios so i don't I and how you expand and how you expand like it's if you can only do x things with actions now there could be things with actions that come out later on that you can burn actions on but the core mechanic itself is functional but nothing spectacular nothing that other games haven't done already um and like having as simple a stat line as you have inherently puts you in a box again for what you can write right, and it disconnected the weapons from the models that's What's all that? you could have done you have so you have a clear weapon line on right. each of these if you had made all of the weapons their own thing and then the stat guy's the other Make thing. Make more cards and slide the weapons underneath or something. Yeah. Like, you just do, like, a guy, like, the other game they made. Do Kill a, Team. Or even, like, <laughs> Titanicus. where you got, Titanicus, you got, yeah. you're, you got weapon cards that you slide on top of the, the chassis, basically. And then anyone can be anything. And then you can have customizable models. And you can make your unique warband. Yeah. And, like, hey, we're getting into something now. But that's not what it is. So... I, they can't judge it on that. Now we're we're what ifing at this point. Yeah. Um, so for factions, again, they're functional. They did a uh, a good job of differentiating, but I I think good. that well, the thing is that like right now because I can't change anything that I have, and this I might change this rating in particular 
if they do release like a second box set of new unit types for all the factions. Right now, they do what they say in the tin. One's tough, one's fast, and yep. get like a glass cannon. Um, I'm I, I love the to me I can't I can't upgrade the score based on how they look or their story because that comes into the model design and the, the background. It's a component thing for me. Um, so I think they get a three as well, just for the factions. They they reflect what they say, but they don't particularly have a lot of differential especially when i accidentally locked myself out of one of my abilities <laughs> just because of like rule of cool when i thought looked cool and, and point values um and then also uh just the inherent limitations based on the core engine campaign scenarios though i'm giving it a four like the campaign is functional it does what it's supposed to do um but i think that the if it was just rating it based on like the procedural generation of missions and stuff i'd give it a five the fact that the campaign is a linear series of games um and it has other problems. I think that I'm going to talk about with playability, but it's not a, it's not a, a endless campaign. It has like a logical conclusion. Um, it pulls it down from a five for me down to a four. So uh, overall, my game design rating was out of fifteen. I gave it a ten, so it's going to be three to five. And then you gave it a eight, which is going to be out of a fifteen, ooh, just over fifty percent. It's going to be thirty-three. Should be. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it is over. <laughs> it's going to be... Jeez. Uh, oh, I, should, I should get a calculator. What am I doing here? We have math. We have math machines. There's literally one in front of me. It's going to be... 8 divided by 15. 53%. So it's going to be... 5 out of... 10. 2.5 out of 5. 2.5 out of 5. 2.55. <laughs> Actually, 2. it's 2.53. 5.3 out of 5, yeah. Um, and so let's talk about playability. So playability is going to be first thing, the Christmas morning test. So the time invested to get to play it, um, right. how much work we had in hours, five hours for each of us to build and paint and ready to go with our ba our units and yep. then another two hours for the terrain. No, it was more than that for the train. Cause this isn't even all the train yet. Oh, I, that's true. Cause it's, that, not it's all probably, the it's probably 15 to 20 hours. I'd say you play to, box to get day. to do it. Yeah, to get to do it. We, we spent at least 15 hours So does doing it just this. fail? Is that, is that how this is being measured? Like, no, 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 no. Open I, the box and play. It's all you about can how, open the box and look at it. <laughs> it's all about how... You, I think it all comes down to how you feel about it. This this one, I don't know if we can quantify yet. This The, the second part of this, the replayability part, is going to come down to how we feel after having played three games of it, right? Because mm. we've, we've played about... We've probably played nine hours. Probably, let's say we did three hours each game, talking about it, setting it up, right. getting ready to go. Out of 15 hours invested so far. Yeah. Um... So let's say to recoup your cost, like recoup your Christmas morning test. Uh, th this was also, I, I should say, this was also a fairly quick, as far as like miniature war games go, getting ready to play. Like yes, this is we blitzed that pretty well. Well, but even but even so, the components lent themselves to being built quickly. You know what I mean? They were built buildable one way. They were easy to clip off and count and get them done. Like the building part didn't take forever. The painting part didn't take forever. And actually, partly to do because the games workshop because we both used some contrast paints and some washes and stuff in there. Um, and then there was a couple snags with the train, just making sure the train was right for the missions and stuff. But other than that, the, the amount of building time, I think if you play a full, like I was comfortable with it. We got it done relatively quickly to the time where we got to have fun. It was about a day's work between the two of us to get to have fun. Uh, so for me, I don't know. I, I, I felt like everything was done with what we got in the box. Yep. I'm not getting that time back. That's fair. We need to have more things. Well, let's talk about the playability in a minute. Okay? All right. Well. I'm just talking about, I, I, I felt like it didn't take me an inordinate amount of time to get on the table. It and, took and a miniature that, game amount of time to yes. get it on the table. And that, and that Workshop did a good effort, basically, to make it easy to do. Right. Right. They didn't, they didn't nail it, so I'm not going to give them a five, but I'm going to give them a four on their amount of effort to try and make this quick to play. You know what I mean? To get out of the box and put together without going right to snap fit. Because right. if you go right to snap fit, then... Or ready to go out of the box, but color-coded. Or color-coded, then you get a five, exactly. It's not X-Wing, it's not Song of Ice and Fire, where you're just punching tokens and playing. Yeah. But this, And I don't think you can do a miniature war game, even that snap fit, because you're still clipping pieces and putting them together, that's going to get a five, as far as like going to instant fun. <laughs> you know, like we're Ice not just punching... Fire is right there. It is, that's what I'm saying. Because yeah. there's, no, there's no punching, and, like, there's nothing on frames there. Yeah. You're just literally opening the box and going. Right. So, without being a, board, a literal board game... I think a four is probably the outside of what I can give them for that. What about for you? How'd you feel about the, just the, the, the ease at which we got to play? Yeah. I mean, just a three. Three. It's, 
it's another miniature game. Like, it came together as good or as bad as, like, opening a War Machine box or a... War Machine, you wouldn't need the train. Infinity. <laughs> so just you play on we a could, flat mat. You can use pictures of terrain. the train. Um, and then uh, War Machine, you'd still Infinity, need to do some Infinity, they come together fairly well yeah, now. Yeah, th th there's still the table part in Infinity, too, where you're building some stuff. Although, I yeah. guess in the Infinity starter set, you're just putting the boxes inside some cardboard. Right, and we're go. talking about the two-player starter yep. set. That's pretty easy. Yep. Um, so, yeah, three. It's... Cool. it's Miniature Wargaming Standard. This should be at a ten. Because it should be five. <laughs> it should be a five out of ten, not a three out of five, because that gives it too many points. Qu question my system later. Two point five on the previous one. Qu I want to bring my previous one back. <laughs> down, down to two point five. Okay. Yeah. If we're gonna do fractions. And this way it can be two out of five. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want a two point seven five <laughs> out of five. Two point seven five out of five. Okay. Um. So for uh, the second part, then it's gonna be replayability, and that is how much time are you spend playing this. And this is a hard one to talk about right now because we haven't played that many games. Um, how many more games, games do you need to play? How many more games do we need to play before? Well, do you want to play more games right yeah. now? Is really the question, and I think you and I are pretty divided on this. Um, it, I, I have some, I have some comments on. I'm gonna let you go first, but I have some comments not just about the games we play, but I think the, the, the possibility of future games. I'm more interested in what scenarios play than actually playing them. Right. I want to flip all of the things and see the deployments and the twist and the like, how the terrain is and what the victory condition is more than I walk, want to actually go through the game. Like, I should play the game. The actual mechanics of it are, like, meh. But what you're doing is interesting. And right. that's why I'm like, I'd rather take this and put it in a game that has more interesting like moment-to-moment -moment mechanics right. than this does. So, like, without more models, like, if we're going to go just, like, out of the box, maybe two more games, three more yeah, games three more of 45-minute games. We'll get, games. We'll get through, we'll get through our, our six games, and you're probably you're satisfied at this point. Yeah, I don't need to, I definitely don't need to get to 12 of my campaign, which no. I also have failure states halfway along. Where you might have to stop every, and every stall. three yeah. and then have to do them again. Yeah. And then not only that, I'm doing the same mission again now, it's true. too. true. Yeah, you can't play a new mission. So it's like... Well, you'd flip, uh, a, new, you'd flip a new deployment, <laughs> deployment and then and, Just deployment. Yeah. Because the twist and everything else will be set. Yeah. Um. So for me, I, I do... I, I like that there... So it's funny. There's more... And less campaign stuff in here than Kill Team. In in one regard, there's less um, uh, replayability as far as customizing and building out your models. Because in Kill Team, you get to name specialists. They can go up skill paths and trees. They get an experience. They could die. All, all that stuff. Where the yeah. individual model had a story and a progression that came out of the randomness of the gameplay. Right, where you're playing a game and people became heroes and villains and whatever. Yeah. However, that progressed. In this one, a whole bunch of effort's been made to put into a, it a linear storyline where you're you're doing a thing and you're you're reaching a new chapter every three games. So it's like the focus has been placed less on the individual miniatures and what their story is, except apart from your hero a little bit, who feels no who, different than anyone else. Who doesn't really feel that different? Maybe no, give him a third get, action and I might have something going on, <laughs> or he just dies. <laughs> he dies and you create a new one, which doesn't cost you anything, um, except his his experience goes to zero. Uh, and you, I guess you lose artifact too. You lose then, your destiny level. And your artifact, yeah. <laughs> um, but, the, but the emphasis is all in the story. So the emphasis is on the story of the whole warband versus the trials and tribulations of the individual. Uh, and then the, the other flip side of that is you only get to run two stories right now out of this box. So I'm not saying that this is going to be the way it is forever. But if you're playing one of the Chaos Warbands, you have two quests to complete with your warband. And then at that point, your option is basically go buy a new warband. Right? Three quests. To our final just, convergence? No, no, no. Oh. I'm not talking about each. I'm talking about each quest line. There's two storylines oh, to play through, yeah, twelve yeah, yeah, games yeah. to the end, and then you've got to start a new warband or replay the quest you've already played with your existing warband starting back at zero. Right. So it it's it to me. I, what's what's interesting is while they've given us a narrative, it's also a closed loop. Right. It's consumable content where you do it once and then you're done, and the the trick to getting to do it again is you have to go start a new a new story basically with somebody right. else. Or have more models to change up what your story is going to be on the way. On the way and play it all, all all the way over again exactly. So while I find that I find that it, it's very laudable they've put in this like story content, and the the de-emphasization of the uniqueness of the people of them that being interesting and having their own kind of lives and stories disconnects me from the miniatures. For me, it's three things together for a miniature game. It's getting to build and paint and make my little avatar in a right. campaign game in the universe. Watching things happen to them. Because, like, you and I have played, gee, I, I mean, how many games of anything at this point? But you and I can still tell the stories of Scabby Pug. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, there these, like, these, there are specific people, yeah. like Red and Rothgar and Frostgrave. There are specific people whose stories we are going to remember forever. 
and and it's because we 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 lovingly picked a miniature or built a miniature for it we gave them a story and a background and they had their own experiences basically you know red 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 on a collapsing castle falling out of the sky betrayed by everyone in the end after she killed the lich, lich priest or lich king or whatever it's something we're all gonna remember actually people out there listening to this and watching is probably gonna remember too right versus i actually can't remember the name of my warband leader right now and I, I can't remember I the first it, mission yeah, I played. I rolled it yesterday. <laughs> His name's Sever Stalis. Mine had something to do with killing cats. Sever Stalis. <laughs> cat bone crush. <laughs> the cat bone crush. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's to me that's I I see it as being uh, one. It's a good. It's a good from a certain point of view. It's a good product design because you're making it so that a consumer goes and buys something else to get a new quest line. So and it's then a, when it's he a, dies, he was replaced with your cat bone crush. <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's smart business design a little bit to create it that way. But for me, I want to care about my miniatures and their little stories and stuff and have mechanics. And you can't that, customize them. And well, and mechanics that lets me do that to, to customize them, give them new things, yep. have have an exciting story. And I have I have a plot line about a guy trying to become. I'm a champion who I'm not interested in and I can't modify. It's like it doesn't matter. So, so here's it. So, here's, like, so for me, it's, a, but it's, a st- it's a stance thing. You're watching someone's story happen as opposed to having your story happen. Right. But does that make sense? He's, well, he's disposable in his own story. I, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> like, but what, I, what I'm saying is that's the disconnect for me in one. It's like watching a Marvel I movie. Fe- but in one, I feel like in one, I feel like I'm watching the story of someone else's character happen. And the other, I have my own character in the story. And so I just wish it was both. I wish that we had these little stories. I wouldn't mind if they were unique and still disposable and we have to you know, start something else afterwards. If I cared a bit more about the people having the adventure. You know what I mean? If they're my, if it was my creation going off and having the adventure. My leader dies, the game's over. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just do that. Make it <laughs> so that they're way better. And then if he's dead, you go back to start and you're, 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 you're macaque bone crush number two. And like he's right. here to avenge his brother's like attempt, and you're back at the beginning. Right. You cut the campaign in half, so you don't have people spiraling out of control with five, six, seven hundred points of extra models, because he killed their leader. Like right. His his start. his goal of ascension to being part of Archeon's army ends. is cut short ends, because yeah. he died. But in this, and it's like the quest again. He might die, and even if he gets knocked out, you're recruiting a fighter. He has a what? His brother, like other bone cr- cat crusher, six percent chance of dying at the end of the game. It's two d yes. six on a two. on a snake eyes or a three. Uh, it's one in thirty six, so it's two in thirty six, which means one in sixteen. Yeah, one in eighteen. One, one in eighteen. 18? Yeah. So it is like six ish percent. Yeah. 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 That's that sounds like a thing that I'm going to be riveted over. <laughs> and then even if he dies, you just get a new one. That's fair. Um... So yeah, for me, I think it's it's the fact that I don't feel as engaged by the story of the people. I like that there's a big story. I just wish it was both. It immediately became and, a com- mechanic game to me. Yeah, it became it became They're a tactical game, a tactical yeah. game, not a not a not a story driven game. Um, so as strong as I think the replayability of just like the core game mechanic is, I love the like dialing up a mission and playing. Great. I the campaign setting itself, it's actually the core gameplay driving the replayability here, not necessarily playing in a campaign. I feel and, like the campaign and, is just an overlay for the core game mechanic as opposed to the other way around where... And the core game mechanic, I find, isn't... There's not much going on. Yeah, for the scenarios, that's great. That's what I'm talking about. Is, is, I want to play another scenario. Oh, those aren't the core mechanic, though. Right. This is the core mechanic. Well, I'm, talking about the the core, scenarios... sorry, I'm talking about the core mission mechanic here, not right. the core mechanic. Okay, the mission is, mechanic. It's how right. I come up with what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm excited by because it's another crackerjack process right. versus... The, the next the next chapter in my story because it's already set and I know what it is it's not like yeah. revealed to me over time I'm not as excited about it yeah you know? it's not it's, it seems like a thing they've added to just the core flipping of cards to create your mission what's with the lack of failure states maybe that's what they need to start bringing back what do you mean just lose just, just lose, lose. Like, I'm sorry, you can't yet. lose right now no it's true because you just hire a new leader you just, and go just slower. experience yeah you right? just slow down a little bit instead <laughs> yeah I guess so well uh, that's going to be so what's Make your score for punishing. what's your score that's for replayability you need the darkest dungeon <laughs> I, just something um i mean replayability once again the problem is that on one side and I, I said it right at the very beginning i like the mission generator i would keep the mission generator and put it in something else because i don't care about playing it out right so i mean i'll probably play this again when a new box comes out but like i'm just giving you my warband to go play with oh, like, I know. that's how little i care about going back into Warcry. um probably a two for me I mean, I would play it again. I'm not totally done with it. Right. But I'm going to pick other game before I pick this one. Okay, fair. Um, I'm going to give it a three point, a three, a three out of five. Yeah. For for replayability, um, I think that the the core like pickup game mechanic is going to be like infinitely replayable. Yeah. But once the fact that like 
we're gonna have to buy more content to get more quests over time and, and there isn't just like a proceed like they didn't do the same procedural generation they, they have a, they have like an infinite like like scenario, scenario mechanic with a limited quest mechanic you know what i mean where well, they just have a really like tacked on quest mechanic that's my issue it's yeah. that like none of this matters i don't need this sheet other than to keep track of my names like get rid <laughs> right. of the destiny levels like oh one reroll once per game that's that's what you get for showing up randomly once every six missions ish if you roll <laughs> like who cares <laughs> Yeah, it might be clutch one in eight games. But you're going to use it the first time you roll a dice because why would you not? Like, you might as well have made that the first re-roll each game because there's no time when you don't want to just kill a guy. Yeah. Because that's the whole... There's not enough going on in the actual game. Like, I I don't know. It's it's neat. I like that there's, a, there's this awesome scenario editor and, like, scenario generator... But there's not enough interactions between the models. It's right. just move, move, attack, move, or move, attack, move, move, attack, attack. And that's it. That's it. How many dice do you roll? Did you roll a six? I guess you win. Oh, you rolled two ones. I guess you lose, Ash. Like, that literally was the games. <laughs> it was, that, for whatever well, games it was, yeah. At least two of them were, well, I rolled and I won because of this. And then you rolled and you lost because of this. Right. I rolled my six dice. I got the plus one movement, so I had enough movement for my javelin guy to jump over you. If I hadn't gotten that, I couldn't have done it and would have lost. You didn't kill him with your last attack in the previous game. I guess I'm spoiling things now. <laughs> Stop spoiling Whatever. things. Whatever. You made it this far in. You're committed at this point? <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to figure out how these outcomes go, but or how we got to that outcome. All right. Well, um, I'm I'm gonna do an overall average right now. It looks like uh, for proc design, um, I gave it a four to five. Uh, you gave it a three point five out of five. For game design, you gave it a two point three seven five out of five because yeah. you changed your score. So basically, a two out of five, um, and I gave it a three point five out of five. Uh, and then for playability, I gave it a. Um, Looks like a 3.5 out of 5, and you gave it a 2 out of 5 overall. Yep. Uh, so 2.5 out of 5 um, overall. So uh, it, it rankings, it looks like I'm like 3.5 out of 5 when we average everything, and you are at roughly 2.5 out of 5. So you gave it a 50. You gave it a pass. Yeah, it is a functioning game. Yep. It, it, it's and, the same and, problem I had the other time. You have so many cool things going on, but there's things that have just been like, like tacked on, like right. well, we should add this. And this, we're gonna and, do anything with we it. Can't say this is the rating for the game. This is for the box set because it's, it's not. We we don't have all the factions. We don't have the models yet. It, do you think this, this is, is our change? experience? I do. I do. do I you think, think when the we campaign have, system and the experience if, and gaining throughout it is going to change. But if they've added more models for me to try it and things with, maybe I'll replay even just as a pickup game. The models can change. That's it, fine. But that's what, not this. That's right, not the if, campaign but, but setting. But if what you wanted was a campaign game, if I don't want a campaign game, I just want a fun, quick strategy game. Yeah. I'm okay with that too. Like okay. It doesn't have to be a campaign game for me because I, I wasn't, my mind wasn't set up for it to be a campaign game. Right. My mind was set up for it to be a kitchen table game. It's, right. it's something in between Shade Spire and uh, Age of Arena? Sigmar. And Age of Sigmar. And Age of Sigmar. Right. So it's something in between those two things. Right. In between board game and army game. Right. Exactly. So uh, I'm not, I wasn't heart set on campaign. So it's not a deal breaker for me that I think the way that if that's what you went in there wanting, if the campaign system is what you wanted of this and the story driven stuff, then I think that's why, I think that's the difference in our scores and the way you feel, the way I feel. I think it's a competent yeah. skirmish game. It's, I just don't, it's not, it's not an RPG, right? It's not a tabletop RPG. You make a random scenario generator and you make us a, 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 the, the lore of these guys adventuring to become heroes. And then you just go, ah, don't worry about that. We're just going to fight each other on the random campaign scenario. <laughs> so we'll just cut out the reason why we're doing it. But it's three ways to play, right? It's three ways to play. It's that commitment to here's a tactical way of playing, here's an open way of playing, and here's a narrative. So it's like pickup game, competitive game, in between is like the narrative story-driven game. It's they They haven't emphasized one. Right, and if what you wanted was emphasis on one, it's not the the proc was never. Why it went right in the middle? Yeah, because like they didn't emphasize one. It doesn't get to be great or terrible. It just right. it functions. does three. It does three things that function basically. Yeah, and it has for every A plus in like model design and the models functioning and looking great. You have a problem of they're totally set in their ways. Right. You have a great mission generator and a terrible campaign. You go. We have really awesome components and we can set up a board, but that's the only way it can be. And you go, ah, oh, well, 
<laughs> it's awesome. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> not for me. Right, not for you. That's fair. And I guess for me, it's wait and see what else comes out because that's going to be, if this if this is going to be a fun tactical. That's the only tactical, way for you to have something to bring that you is, back. Well, that's it. At, at this point, I'm <laughs> at this point as a consumer, I'm literally waiting for the next product so that I can see what I'm going to be interested in because I don't know yet, right? Because I, I, I can't know out of the box what else there's going to be. And that means I need to go and buy something else to, to have the next thing I'm excited about, which is yep. fine. Uh, it's just that's that's the way that this game is now designed, right? Yep. It's designed that I have to wait for the next... I, I don't get the information for the next thing to be excited about in the box. I'll wait for GW to, to show it to me or put online or go and buy the box to find out. This is why I gave it such a milk toast response. Because <laughs> you... You want not it, you're, not, you're not inspired to go see the next thing right now out of what came in here. No, I, I just want to be more interested in what's here. Oh, that's fair. That's my problem. Right. Like, I don't want to have to wait until the next thing to come out to have fun with what I have. Like, right. the problem is we've capped out. Like, we can go play this more and we'll find cool new missions. Guaranteed that's going to happen, but they'll play the same. And that's my problem. Right, like, got it. The scenarios won't actually change. Just where we start will change. Right. Because we'll move, move, attack, move, attack, move. Attack, 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 attack move. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. So there's our review after three games. I mean, again, just putting those provisos out there. Three games um, and a weekend of playing Age of Sigmar Warcry. We're, I'm undecided. Owen feels pretty decided in his opinion. Um, I'm in the middle right now with just what we have, but I think that there could be more things to come out and excite me. And Owen is it doesn't. I'm just ambivalent. Yeah. It's fine. Like. I might actually take these cards and go play like Relic Blade. Right. Like, Just use the mission generator for something else. Like, cool we're going to use the mission generator and it'd be fine. I think even everything works wording wise. Like, <laughs> I don't think you actually have to change anything. You just need to divide your force up into sword, shield, uh, dagger for the deposits. Yeah. That'd be it. Can't and you can't have half your guys in one. Yep. We're done. I'm done. <laughs> right? Like, there you go. Great. It's a, That's how good it is. Yeah. It is really good. It can be poured into anything. So anyway, we'll see you. And uh, you'll hear us in more of these podcasts next week. I hope you enjoyed this most recent Let's Talk. Um, big thanks for watching and for checking out the Let's Play and the How to Play GMG review. Until next time, I'm Ash Zoe. So long. So long.